So this is my first presentation for under JQ. Um, my name is Fabien Dupont. I'm working at Red Hat for two and a half years, and mostly on manage on cloud farms. So during the presentation, you will see a lot of Red Hat products, not always the community community versions, um, but I stick to manage IQ. So at least I'm on, on topic. Um, and the use case I will present today has been raised uh, during um, um, delivery with customers. Um, since um, last year, uh, I'm also working on OpenShift. So I delivered a few um, projects with OpenShift and only OpenShift. So later, cloud forms came into the game and we tried with, uh, with my customers to identify uh, the right use cases. So one of them is how to enforce the DevOps approach um, on top of OpenShift with Manage IQ. Um, I don't know if you know um, OpenShift, so I will get through the DevOps. I don't like that word. Everybody use it, so. Um, but it's quite a good buzzword to get people in a room. So what is DevOps? It's a lot of things, but most of all, it's trying to fill the gap between developers and operations, making them work together so that we've got frictionless um, operations of your application. What is the value for a company is not really the infrastructure, it's the application. And today we've got strong separation between devs and ops, so we are trying to fill in the gaps. And a traditional workflow for DevOps is letting developers take control of the application and run it and have the responsibility of the application also. Um, until a few years ago, um, I was working for operations, so I'm most operation guy than developer, but we had the responsibility for the application. When it failed in production, it was the ops responsibility and not the devs. So that's also some kind of revenge from the ops uh, that want to push the bad things back to the, to the dev. So in this kind of environment, we've got a, a pass or a YAS platform so that the application can run. That's all that we need. The, the ops take care of uh, this environment so that we've got uh, near 100% stability of the environment and the right level of performance. Then the devs uh, provision their environment locally or with OpenShift. So OpenShift is a pass platform developed by Red Hat with a strong community um, called OpenShift Origin. Uh, the community is really huge. There is a lot of activity. And the devs write their application in containers, ideally as microservices, but it's not um, mandatory. You can run um, legacy applications, uh, monolithic. And most of the time, we will find some CI CD process, continuous integration, continuous deployment, so that the devs are responsible for the deployment of the application and the life cycle of the application, not getting stuck with um, the operation planning. So everybody's got to work together, but, are, but the application team is responsible for delivering the application and the, the updates. So microservices can help um, separate different components of the application with di different life cycles and so on. So OpenShift, help them to build this kind of application in containers. And the DevOps is simply putting everyone to orchestrate and deploy apps and then monitor and operate apps. So this part is for dev and this one for ops. So getting everybody working together for the better of um, what we call DevOps today. 
So that's how we see infrastructure operation and infrastructure guys. They provide containerized infrastructure, orchestration, policy-based governance, configuration management, automation packaging in the base, thing that we see as um, admin guys. And the devs, they use um, fancy laptops. They collaborate, they do CI, CD. They work around issues. So I think that the issue is, might not be the right word. A request for enhancement is not an issue. It's a good news. So then it goes through source code management, code review, and then deployment on the platform as a service. So what we're trying to achieve is building a software factory so that we get, we get um, a rel reliable and high quality deployment for the application. So when the dev and ops unite, we've got a nice workflow schema that of what could be and there is no um, ideal rules around DevOps. Every team will decide what is the right process, might make the process evolve around um, a long time, but um, for the sake of the demo demonstration, um, I decided one of, of, for one of them. So here, the developer commits to his, its own repository push to the project repository, so merge request, everybody, to a um, specific repository. Then the CI takes care of build, test, review, delivery, and with the continuous deployment, we deploy to whatever environment we want. It may not be a production. It might be some pre-production or um, User, user acceptance test, uh, but the process is still the same. During the process, we will push, we'll push the code or uh, container images to a build repository that will be consumed by the test environment. Then, if all the tests are green, we go through the review, and then to the delivery. The de delivery in itself is simply pushing to a specific repository so that the deployment team can just uh, push the image. All along that, we will monitor the deployment and every steps so that we can have um, history and every information about how it's going and have statistics. And the third party is mostly we will always have to integrate with things that we don't um, manage ourselves. So the ecosystem for the demonstration um, is still quite simple. So we have free IPA, which is an integrated security information management solution. So basically it will provide authentication. So we'll have we will leverage mostly the LDAP part of the product, but we could also use Kerberos. So we we'll manage IQ simply to uh, authenticate users through the SSO. And we can use a uh, PKI to um, dynamically get certificates for applications. We will use GitLab. Um, it's an on-prem version clone of GitHub. So most of my customers don't want to use GitHub. Uh, they, are, they are administrations in France, so they don't quite um, trust American companies. And the key point is that they don't trust their developers to not put um, critical information like passwords inside the repository and then publicly on GitHub. <laughs> so it will prevent some misuse. Um, 
We will use it for source code management, ticket management. You, we can do code review through, through merge requests. So it's not exactly like a Garrett or more complex tools, but really a good starting po point for code review. And there is an integrated continuous integration um, engine, um, GitLab CI, that can simply do all that steps by simply labeling ap application. Of course, we will use OpenShift Origin. So OpenShift Origin leverages Docker and Kubernetes to deploy applications. So um, you, we can also build the containers from source. That's a, a key feature. Um, in OpenShift, we simply um, create a new application with the, with the information of uh, the URL of the Git repository. Uh, if, if it finds some pattern files like um, uh, pom.xml uh, packages.json, it identifies the language and then builds the application from the dependency manager of the language. We can then deploy any, do you can also deploy any Docker image. So you can bring your own image uh, without providing your source code. Um, we can manage ap application lifecycle. So uh, when we deploy an application, we can also uh, specify the way we want to upgrade it. Um, we, sim we can simply uh, erase all containers and deploy the new, new version or um, deploy like 20% at the time of the application and so on. And you can, and can integrate with Eclipse if we, you want an ID, ID. And of course, manage IQ, so don't need to present it. Uh, and we use it to orchestrate the deployment. So if we take the same process as earlier, um, developers want to collaborate. So we can have a lot of tooling for the code. Yes, I said Eclipse, but we're still using Vim. Um, you can have Kanban for your process project management, documentation in a wiki, snippets for passbin, uh, issues for ticketing, and chat integrated in a, in a GitLab. You have Mattermost that is a clone of um, Slack. So you can also have simply IRC, which is pretty, pretty doing the job. Then for the project repository, we have the asset, asset management, um, code and config in GitLab, documentation in, in GitLab too, policies and rules in manage IQ. Well, um, we don't have the objects to um, have the policy yet. But maybe one day we'll have generic objects, so it could be. Continuous integration for GitLab. Um, the build is done by OpenShift itself. So we leverage the source to image feature to build the containers. Um, test is done in the same way, in the same um, uh, operation uh, because we can leverage in the source to image, we can integrate the testing. So if the build fails uh, or finishes with an exit code different than zero, to be more precise, it will be considered as failed. So the CI can get information and stop it. The review will go through a um, merge request. And for the delivery, um, we will use um, the information from the Docker registry that is integrated in OpenShift, uh, a label, so we, a, a tag in the Docker um, world. Uh, we just have to tag in the image to say it's ready for review. So, um, we already have in the review project um, the 
deployment config that will um, check that there is a new version or not of the container. So if we tag a new container with the tag review, it will be automatically deployed. So we can give uh, the um, um, give the end to um, the review team that will just check that everything is okay. It, it goes through all the quality checks. And then the team can simply um, tag again the container for production and it will be deployed to production. So, like that, Deploy through the deployment config. Third party is any, any tool that you want. Um, so, the control center is, of course, manage IQ. Um, and I have a demonstration. So, I recorded it um, on the last day to provide. So, here we are seeing the, the interface of free IPA in the commercial version. Uh, called IDM. Um, it's a web portal. We have a few users already created, Alice, Bob, Cliff, David, Elvis, and so on. So they are all in uh, an LDAP uh, directory. I have created some groups. So the most important one are the de development team. Uh, the demonstration is mostly based on those groups. I also have review and production team ready for future steps. And one of the users is called Bob. Uh, and we will do most of the steps with this user and admin because it's easier to be an admin, manage IQ for demonstration. So here we are logged in GitLab as Bob. We create a new project. So project is um, a Git repository, and we can access it through HTTP. Uh, we can also do it uh, through SSH, of course. Um, there, we just copy and paste the um, Git URL. So you see it's maybe you no no you probably don't see, but the name is slash username slash project name. We create a single file, index.php, that say hello world, quite classical. We add some commit message. So to go fast and not use your ID and so on, you can go through the interface, probably not for a big project. Uh, and then the code is ready to be used. Then we move to OpenShift. I use the enterprise version. It will probably, uh, almost surely work with the origin version. We create a new project, project A. I'm just getting it fast, so no display name, no description. And we will simply deploy a PHP. So we've got specific images, like I said, like builder images that can build your code. And then we will deploy a PHP 5.6 application. I give it a name, component A1, the repository URL, like it was in GitLab, and click on create some message to tell us how to use OpenShift. Then we'll move to the overview of the project. And we can see that a build is running. So the application is building by itself. We, here we have the name, the DNS name of the application that has been auto-generated. Uh, basically, the name of the application, dash project name, dot 
a specific um, domain. So everything is created in, in that one. And oh, it's going too fast. So we have all the logs. We see that we are cloning the repository. And somewhere, yes. And there, on the bottom, pushing the image to the, the registry integrated in OpenShift. If we get to the overview, the application has been deployed, and the Hello World is coming. So that's how we can work manually with um, um, OpenShift and GitLab. So I get back to the project page and go to manage IQ. Quite standard interface. <laughs> uh, I only have one provider, one infrastructure. I go to the service catalogs. In the catalog I have, I, I have created a DevOps catalog and I have a project item. The project item is generic. It's not based on any provider exist, uh, in the environment. I choose a business unit. Uh, the information is coming from the um, LDAP. I give a name to my project, a display name. This time I'm, I go a bit further. Um, description. And in the bottom, I have the team that I want involved in my process. So I've got the development team, which are the teams with the groups we saw in LDAP. So I'm just getting the information from IDM. We've got a review and production team. I create a I submit the request. So once the approval has, is okay, it's pretty fast. Uh, I do a few um, API calls. So the longest part is the approval in, indeed. And then when I refresh, it's active. And next time it will probably be finished. Oh, not yet. Okay, so it's finished. If I get back to GitLab, I go to the dashboard, I'm still logged in as Bob. I see that I am part of a group called Project V. So in GitLab, we can create groups so that the repository don't belong to one user. They can belong to groups. So here I create a project, a group per project for and each component has its own repository. And in OpenShift, I created a project. So I could already deploy an application just by creating the project. I will just log, log out and connect an, as another user, um, a power user that can see every project in OpenShift. Because indeed, I created a project for every uh, environment. So one for development, one for review, and one for production. So that I can keep the isolation between the um, different steps of the life cycle. If I get back to Manage IQ, I go to My Services. I will set that Project B is there. If I click on Project B, I created a button on the item so that I can call uh, automation. And this time I will add a component, PHP 5.6 component. And I get um, this time a dialogue with pre-selected business unit and project because I'm already in the project. I call my component component B. I can also select license 
for the application. The information is coming from GitLab and will generate a license file. And I can put the parameters of the application, maximum memory, database type, uh, and configuration. So the request does, doesn't appear um, in the first place because the way I implement it is I code the API so that it generates a service. So I order a service from a catalog item. And then uh, another side effect is that I also provide a project ID so that the, it becomes a child service. So in the, the interface, we've got a tree. Uh, and if I want to um, retire the project, it will retire all the components too. So if I get back to GitLab and refresh, I have a repository, component B1. There, I get the, the URL, this time with project B slash component. I will go to OpenShift. So my project is already there. The build is okay. However, my container is not in a deep blue, it's light blue, meaning that there is probably an issue. And if I click on the code, it's running, but you can see I have zero containers ready. So there is a readiness test in OpenShift. And if I go and see the logs, it says that there is no uh, index.html or index.php file. And I didn't create one, so that's logical. So the build is okay, but it can, cannot run. So my application won't get up. So I get back to GitLab, add a new file the way the developer would do, index.php. This time, I will do PHP info. It's more uh, sexy than hello world. Um, some comments. So I'm connected as Bob, still a developer on the project. So um, when I created the group, I gave him the privilege of developer, so he's not an, an administrator. So when he pulls code, push, push code, it will generate a merge request. So I will submit, submit my merge request. Yes. So I will connect with another user that will accept a merge request. So there is already a first check from a senior developer, project manager, whatever you want. I will remove the, the branch automatically generates a new branch uh, when, you, when you are just a developer. And the merge request is approved. So I have my index.php file in the master branch. And this time if I get back to OpenShift, I can go to the component B1 build and click on start build again. So it will build a new image. Um, on storage aspects, it will be just the difference between the two images. So one will have index.pp, not the other one. So it will be approximately um, four kilobytes um, because we are using blocks of four kilobytes. Um, and then it's building again. Takes a bit of time. 
So the build is okay. You can see there is a new deployment, version two, in progress. And this time, the container is coming up in a light blue and then deep blue because the container is okay. So this time I, I have one on one containers running. I can get information such as a metrics. So we can see the quota that was in the dialogue is also in the for the application. And this time HTTP started correctly. So if I get back to the metrics just to have some Nice demo. <laughs> and if I get back to the overview and click on the FQDN, the page is coming up. So that's the kind of environment we are able to deploy with Manage IQ um, and OpenShift and the development ecosystem. So that's what my customers are, are asking me today as a, an added value to manage IQ on top of OpenShift, uh, not limited to uh, metrics collection. So at the moment, we don't have automation around OpenShift. Uh, we have metrics collection, we have uh, reports, uh, but it's mostly um, the inside part of uh, cloud forms. So we are, I'm trying to, we are trying to add a bit more information. So for the details, um, when I create a project or a component, I serialize the information in the automation tree. Um, for those that are um, used to the Manage IQ um, integrated IPAM, um, that's the same kind of implementation. It helps keeping the information on the long term. So I can't write directly to the VMDB, so I hijack the VMDB automate, um, waiting for generic objects. I know there is topic uh, tomorrow, I think. Um, I deploy ch children's services directly from buttons in the interface. So for my customer, it was uh, mandatory to come from the service and add resources to the service and not get back to uh, the catalog and select the service from the catalog. So um, it's more about usability. Um, along the time, I did a lot of rework on the dialogues so that we get the right level of information and the uh, right kind of questions we ask to the, to the user. And a lot of tests, uh, thanks to the API, I can call a lot, I can make a lot of API calls to start my automate. So a uh, lot of tests and having your eyes um, accustomed to reading the logs as they flow down. Um, so I've put back the information of the, the items. Most of the time I get metadata and everything here is serialized in the, in the automation tree. Same here. So the next steps. Um, going a bit further, whenever I create an application or project, create the Mattermost team in, a, in the Mattermost component so that the team can really collaborate through chat. Um, allow for more life cycles. So, the, mo the motto for this morning was don't assume, ask. And here I, uh, I have assumed that the life cycle was build, test, review, and so on. But some of my customers have more than 10 environments from the dev to the production. So they, it would be difficult to just um, add some states. Information can be <laughs> gathered from somewhere else. Uh, 
deploys the .git file dash ci dot yaml file. Um, this file is, is um, like a Jenkins file for those um, more used to Jenkins. It describes um, uh, CI steps. So if we have the life cycle information, we can deploy a, pre, uh, a predefined um, description of this um, life cycle directly in, into GitLab so that we can orchestrate all the steps. Um, and, it, and anything from the field. So customer are always challenging us um, asking for evolution along the time. So uh, we are using an agile approach so that we can enhance the, um, the experience. So that's it. If you have any question. We're gonna have a break now. Uh, I believe we have a break that goes until 3.30. So you have time now to uh, go out and uh, <laughs>